To be a CEO, you have to be smart, understand legalities, know money, and manage all of the nuts and bolts to have a successful operation. This remarkable Women of the Upper Peninsula contest finalist does just that, but it's her heart, soul, and deep compassion for the cause that makes the Steve Mariucci Family Beacon House what it is today. Rebecca Bartlemay has the story. When you walk through the doors of the Steve Mariucci Family Beacon House, it's probably for an unfortunate reason. A lot of people have heard of Ronald McDonald houses where families will stay when a child has a serious illness and is near a children's hospital. Um, many people have heard of Hope's Lodges, which are cancer um, related. It's a little house next to a, a cancer treatment center. Um, I recently just read a beautiful story about the Fisher House where veterans stay when they're getting medical care. So what Beacon House is, is all of those things rolled into one because our regional medical center is here um, for when people have cancer or they have serious illnesses, they um, a brain tumor or um, orthopedic surgery is required. Um, this is the hospital that they come to. So when you have that medical emergency, that you have a safe, affordable place to stay, and the last thing you have to worry about is, can I afford it? Thank you for calling Mary to Family Beacon House. This is Mary, how can I help you? With many helping hands to guide patients and their families through what could be life's most frightening time is Mary Tavernini Dowling, leading the way as Beacon House CEO. So I feel very blessed that I got to grow up here in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan and I truly think that this is a very unique place. Um, I did move away for a little bit and everywhere I worked, people would always comment on my work ethic and I thought that was interesting because I was just like everyone else I grew up with. We work hard, we take our job seriously, um, we show up for work, we do our very best. That's just, I think, how Upers are. And so I am very proud to be a Uper, and this is where um, I want to spend the rest of my life. I'm very, very lucky to be married to an amazing man, and I have two beautiful stepkids that um, make my home life magic, but they're also very supportive of how passionate I am about Beacon House. And you won't see Mary just sitting in her office all day. She's at the front desk, making meals for guests, and most importantly, making these guests feel like they are home. I will never forget the day that I was in the Beacon House. I was in one of the guest rooms that was a makeshift office, and a lady walked in the door with two grocery bags, and I asked her if she needed help finding the kitchen. And she said, no, I'm here to check in. And those grocery bags were her luggage. She was um, told that she had cancer and that the only way that she was gonna survive was to come to Marquette for treatment. And she said that she would decline the treatment because she couldn't afford to stay here to have that care. So she had made a conscious decision to, to not survive because of her financial hardship. And when we got to know her a little bit better, she had so much to live for, and she had so much to give the world still. And by Beacon House being that place where she could stay and not have to worry about how much it was gonna cost because of the generous donors who make us be able to do this, um, she fought the cancer, she survived and she thrived, and to this day she still sends us an annual note and tells us how much she appreciates what we did for her. But, you know, there's been thousands of people since her that we've helped. But I always think back that she's the one who really showed me what uh, an amazing thing a Beacon House is that, and how important it is. If it's just one person, it's worth it. But when you know every day, it's, it's dozens of people daily, it's thousands annually um, and over the years of course you just think about all the lives that you've you've made a little less worried a little less um, a little bit more bearable her light shines beyond the guests at beacon house guiding growth in the marquette and surrounding communities i've known mary for many years and i feel i've had a front row seat to see the many things she's done for the beacon house for me, it was a no-brainer for putting her in for the award. Um, after all she's done, writing the nomination was the easy part. Keeping it to 500 words was probably the, actually the hardest part. Just on day-to-day, -day, you know, she's created a culture of caring um, from all the employees, the spearheading 
over the years hundreds of fundraisers raising millions of dollars. Her um, lobbying with local hospital administrators, uh, executives, legislators. <laughs> she just leaves no stone unturned when it comes to um, promoting and fundraising and is just the, as I said in the write-up, some would say she's the face of the Beacon House. I say she's the heart and soul of the Beacon House. Recently, Beacon House celebrated the one-year anniversary of its new facility. It's a project that started in 2014 when UP Health System Marquette announced construction of a new hospital on the other side of town. Kind of surveyed everyone to say, would you still come? Would you still stay? And you know, 99% said no. They wouldn't. They wouldn't come here for their care um, because it was too far away. They could only come if there was a Beacon House, and they would only stay if Beacon House was closer. So that just made it be a no-brainer for us. Well, we needed to move the Beacon House. We needed to build a new one right next door. And that has been actually the most enormous blessing because we got to design this house to be a Beacon House. Fast forward to 2022 and the new Beacon House opened for full operation. And Mary was behind this effort the whole time. That's been just an absolute miracle to me that we were able to focus on that cancer patient. What do they need? How is that going to work? Um, the person with mobility issues, how do we make that easier for them to get around to navigate things? Um, mothers with small children, um, how do we make that children's experience be, how do we get them to be able to still be a kid while they're going through this medical crisis? Every different kind of guest, we were able to just look at this and say, what can we do to make that perfect for them, or it's just better anyway? And then to be blessed with, you know, Steve is our chairman of our board and our, the most amazing board of directors who all agreed, don't do this good enough. Let's just do it to the best we possibly can. This is our one shot in our lives to do something really outstanding. Let's leave a mark. I don't know how many people in this world love 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 what they do um, you know some people work just to earn a living some people work because that's what they have in front of them um, some people are looking for their next job whatever that whatever that is and I get it <clears throat> but she is she is unbelievable in that she is so committed to what she does and she she doesn't just work a job I don't I don't think she considers it a job I think at the beacon house I think it's it's her vocation I think it's what she loves to do as a human being. Not sure if she had any days off at all. I mean, she sends pictures of she and her staff cooking Thanksgiving meal for the guests and and, and uh, just every day. And to, to a point where I'm concerned about her, it's like, you gotta get a life, you gotta get, you gotta relax, put your feet up once in a while and just chill. You know, I, I she's, she could burn up one second, but she's so into, uh, the people that she works with over there, she loves her staff and, and, and all of that, yes. But she's so committed to the guests at the Beacon House, and they're from everywhere, right? They're not just from the UP, they're from out of the state, out of the country, some of them. And she she takes a personal interest in each one of them, and like nothing that we've ever seen before. And I've, I've kidded her before, she's the modern day Mother Teresa, and she's just, uh, <laughs> She's so unique and uh, God, we all love her. It's clear to see that the Mariucci family beacon house would not be what it is today without Mary Tavernini Dowling. I feel like the luckiest person alive, I think, because I get to be um, front and center uh, watching so many lives change.